welcome to my first ever vlog. I'm going to attempt to give this a go. Um, I'm 34, I live in Redditch in the West Midlands. I've been sewing for about two years now, I'm really loving it. Uh, outside of sewing, I'm a university lecturer, but obviously that's nowhere near as exciting as sewing. Um, my channel's called The House with the Spotty Dog because I live here with my boyfriend Stuart and our dog Flash, who is somewhat spotty. He may appear at some point during this video. Normally he's nosy enough to wonder who I'm talking to if I'm ever doing a video for work or anything, so he might pop in. Um, we're in my sewing room slash office slash dressing room. Um, hopefully at some point in the near future Stuart and I will be moving to a bigger house that is not crammed with stuff. I'll show you around the sewing room and show you where fabric is bulging out of every single orifice um, and why I need to get sewing quicker. Um, that explains why I need to get sewing quicker and that's one of the reasons why I decided to do these vlogs not only because I love watching everybody's vlogs and chatting about fabric randomly myself um, but also because I think if I commit to video and put on YouTube that I'm going to be doing something then it might actually make it happen so that I actually do do it. Um, I'd like to apologise I had an image in my mind that when I did these vlogs and things I would be all made up and you know looking my best um, it's not happened it's a Sunday afternoon when I'm filming this it's been a gorgeous day I've just been out for a big walk with my dog and I'm gonna be pottering about in the garden in a bit and quite frankly I couldn't be bothered to put a full face of makeup on just to record a 10 minute video so I've got no natural We've started at the bottom, things can only get better from this point. I did brush my hair though, so I've made somewhat of an effort. This video today, I'll start with what I'm wearing. I've got the vlogger's ubiquitous favourite, uh, Tilly and the Buttons Agnes top. This is actually the only Agnes I've ever made. Um, it's my first one. I bought the online course that Tilly did, so I'd never sewed with Jersey before I attempted this, and it's absolutely brilliant. Um, and this jersey was a really good starting point as well. It's um, a cotton jersey from Girl Charlie. It's their buffalo plaid. I don't think they do this colourway anymore, um, but I think they do it in like a yellow and blue. So if I can find it, I'll link it down below. Today I'm going to talk about the fabric that I picked up when I went to the Great British Sewing Bee Live a couple of weeks ago. It was a really great event. Um, it was brilliant for it to just be focused solely on dressmaking. Um, though I wasn't distracted by anything else. If I tend to, I went to the Handmade Fair last year and randomly came back with a crochet your own badger kit. So I'm not very focused all the time. Um, but I went off to the Great British Sewing Bee Live with my mum, who's also a sewer, a fantastic sewer, actually much better than I am. Um, and we had all the best intentions of getting things that were on our list and only things that were on our list. And mum actually did quite well. She wanted one of the, the daylight lights because, so that she could see what she was doing on her sewing machine. And she got that and she wanted more needles, more twin needles with varying widths and she got those. And she actually then wanted some pink wool for making a coat and she came back with some pink wool for doing a coat. So she did really well. I started well. So one of the things that I went down and I wanted to get um, was some sweater fabric to make the Sew House 7 toaster sweater. And that was the first thing I got. So I got this fabric. So I'll try and bring it up to the camera if you can see. It's a lovely textured sweater knit. It's really quite thick. Um, it looks like it's going to be really sort of cosy. Um, and I thought it would stand up. It's the version with the, the high neck collar. I'll insert a picture here um, that I'm planning on doing. It's just a normal sweatshirt back to this fabric. And this was from Fabrics Galore on their stand. Uh, it was really good. I think it was only about eight pound or something like that, a meter. Um, so I ticked one thing off my list. This is gonna be a, a toast sweater. So I was feeling quite good at that point. I was sticking to the plan. Everything was going well. Um, the, re the reason 
reason why I picked a toaster sweater to do is one of the things I've been trying, I don't know if you've seen on the Fold Lines blog and things like that, people talking about the curated closet book. Um, I bought it for my mum for her birthday and then she went on holiday, asked me to water the plants um, and I did, but I also stole the book while, back while I was in there, so I'm that kind of nice daughter. Um, but it really gets you thinking about what it is it that you actually wear the most. Um, and I spend a lot of my time out walking with the dog, mooching around the house, and I'm always cold as well. So I thought, right, something like the toaster sweater is something that I'm going to get a lot of wear out of. Out of all my handmade things that I've got, things like the linden sweatshirt and this long sleeve top, are the things that I tend to wear the most. So I'm trying to sew things that I think I will get a lot of wear out of. So it was going well at that point. It continued to go well because one of the other things that's been on my to sew list for a while is a Joan dress uh, from Sew Over It. I love Sew Over It, I love their patterns, um, I love Lisa Comfort and her vlogs, follow them religiously. Um, and ages and ages ago she did a kind of Christmas roundup vlog where she was wearing a tartan um, Joan dress in a, a green and blue tartan and I thought right I really fancy that for my Christmas dress. Now I went slightly off piste. I did get a tartan. It is going to be a Joan dress but it's not green and blue tartan. It is this gorgeous, gorgeous sort of dusky pink and blue with a, a red through it. And this is from Simply Fabrics. Um, again, I'll stick a link down below if I can uh, if I can find a link to it. Um, it was only ten pound a meter. It's a, a lovely pure wool, and I just thought it would make the cutest Joan dress. Um, so that's what it's going to become. So hopefully, I will have made this up by Christmas, and this will be my Christmas Day dress that I'm going to wear. But I just loved it, I couldn't resist it. I mean, it's gorgeous. It's quite a, a fine wool, it's not particularly thick. I don't know if you can see the kind of drape on it. So I don't think it's gonna be overly heavy or anything like that. I think I'm gonna line it with a cotton lawn so that it's still quite breathable. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna be sweating out turkey wearing this dress on Christmas day and that's not what anyone wants. But that's what's gonna to happen to that. So at that point, all still going quite well. Then I had other plans. I said I'd wear a linden. I've got a lovely spotty linden that I made. Um, and I've had an idea in my mind for ages about making another linden that's got a cream body and there and sleeves, but then doing the bands in navy, the neck and the cuffs and the, the, the bottom band in navy. And I'd been looking for the right fabric for a while. I hadn't found anything that I thought was quite right. Um, but I found this waffle jersey um, at Fabric Times stand. And again, this was really good for the value. This was like six pound a meter. Um, so if I bring it up, you see it's got this lovely waffle texture. And then I've got the, the navy as well. It looks quite purple on the camera, it's a, sort of a much darker, you can see it a bit better, that's more like the actual colour. Um, but I thought that would make a really nice linden um, with the neckband and the navy. Um, and I thought that's something that I could wear with jeans casually or I could probably dress it up, wear it to work, um, put it with a nice pencil skirt. You just heard a weird noise, that was Flash shaking his ears, um, so sorry about that. Um, so at this point, I'm feeling great on the sewing bee. I'm doing exactly all, the, getting all the things that are on my list. I'm not deviated at all. And then I met Patrick Grant. It's the most exciting thing that's ever happened. I'll insert a picture of me you know, just basically flinging myself on Patrick Grant. So Patrick Grant, I apologise, um, but he was very lovely. We were talking about his community, uh, and the collective clothing, um, which is a, a great initiative. And I was just completely overexcited after I met Patrick Grant. Um, and all plans went out of the window, all common sense. I also had a Prosecco, which I don't think helped with the sensibleness. And then I started buying random things that had nothing to do 
with any of my plans. Well, actually, that's not strictly true because this next one, I have a bit of a thing um, at the moment for Bowden clothes. And my kind of little mission is to try and sew my own Bowden style wardrobe. And I saw this rayon and it was from Olive and Flo. I'll put the link to their website down below. It's a cotton and steel rayon in this absolutely gorgeous print with these sort of tulips on. I'll bring them up there with the camera. And they only had it's a narrow fabric and there was only about 1.6 meters left on the roll so I had the lot and this was quite an expensive fabric I think it's about 18 pounds a meter um but I thought this is a, a you know prints like this are kind of quite reminiscent of Bowdoin um and if I can get a dress out of it I'm gonna my plan is to get a dress out of it if I can um I'll insert a picture here of the style of dress that I'm thinking of so something with a a round neckline, a slightly gathered skirt, three quarter length sleeves. But if I can't get a dress out of it, I think I'm gonna get a rosy skirt, sew over it, rosy skirt out of it. Um, Cause then I can wear it with like nice black jumpers or pink jumpers and tights and boots and things. Um, but yeah, so this is cotton and steel. It's part of, by Sarah Watts, Magic Forest. It says on the side and I heart unicorns so if you're searching for it those yeah magic forest I heart unicorns why not if you're searching that might help so I haven't gone too off track then but then I bought this it's October in the UK it's getting cold I brought some address fabric. I did see this when we first went in. This is from Hicks and Higgs uh, at the Great British Sewing Bee Live. And I just love the colour on this. It's not your kind of standard pale blue and white. It's kind of a, a really delicate aqua with like an ecru. So I thought it was a bit different. Um, and I did buy ages ago the, the Sew Over It rosy, pattern, rosy dress pattern. Um, and I haven't made it yet. But I thought that would just make a beautiful rosy dress. It would be so cute. Um, and if I get a winter sun holiday booked, then that will be going to the top of the list. So not at all on my plans, but something I can make out of it. Then this happened. Zebras. This was back at fabrics galore uh, they're so cute and I don't know something when I went around there the first time something just drew me to them um, and I, I just love them and my mum said oh I'll buy you the zebra fabric and then someone offers to buy you fabric why not so I think the zebras are going to become like a little shift top um, I'm thinking for the the grey dress the cotton and steel fabric I might put an exposed zip in it, like a rose gold one or something, but I've never put an exposed zip in before. So I think I might trial that out. So I might have a go at doing quite a fitted shift top in this and put an exposed zip um, down the back just to trial that out before I start messing about with my expensive fabric. Um, but yes, clearly all sense and reason had, had gone. And I just thought, yeah, zebras on a mustard background. That's what I need in my life right now. Why not? So those are the things and my plans for my Great British Sewing Bee haul. I'd been holding off buying fabric for quite a while, trying to get rid of some of my stash to make room for that. It hasn't worked exactly, but it's just about fitting in the room at the moment. What I've brought today, I hope might make some of my sewing a bit quicker. I fell asleep on the sofa last night. I woke up, it was obviously just fate. There was an advert on for Lidl. And you know they do the random deals um, that start sort of at different points during the week and they're just ridiculous and once they're gone, they're gone. It was sewing machines and overlockers today. So, I was down at Lidl at 10 o'clock this morning to purchase myself a Singer overlocker. 
I have no room for this in this room. I don't know where it's going to live. Um, it might have to wait until I get a new house and live there. But it was 139 quid for an, a Singer Overlocker. Um, I had a bit of a, a Google and I couldn't find a single one for sort of less than 250 quid anywhere else. So I thought, do you know what? I'm going to go and get it and see what happens. I'm very excited about it. So I can't see it ever happening, actually, that I'm going to wait to the new house. Probably I will just cram it in with all the rest of the clutter. But we'll see. That's the end of my random ramble for today. Um, hopefully I'll get to grips with doing these vlogs and hopefully I'll be able to do things that you enjoy or that you're interested in. If you just like looking at fabric like me, hopefully I'll have lots to show you. But thank you very much for listening today. I'll see you again soon.